The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall, Dean of Studies at OOB which, as everyone knows, is the University of the Occult, the Outre, and the Bizarre. Nature, they say, abhors a vacuum. And in a similar manner, evil always seeks to overcome good. Yes, good seems to attract evil the same way a flame intrigues a moth. But in this case, so much of the time, it's the moth that consumes the flame. Our mystery drama, Stitch in Time, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Leon Janney. I'll be back shortly with Act One. some people who are there, but they're not there, if you know what I mean. That is, you never notice them. Uh, They're a part of the scenery, the background. We're aware of them, but uh, we don't pay any attention to them. And such a person is Miss Amelia Fitzroy. Miss Fitzroy is 50. She's prim. She's proper. She is unbelievably efficient. As indeed she must be, since she is the secretary to William Big Bill Rawlinson, the sole owner of Rawlinson Industries. One of the things that Rawlinson Industries manufactures is a weapon for our government called the J system that is so secret, I refuse to say another word about it. Well, one morning, Miss Fitzroy said to her boss, Mr. Big Bill Rawlinson, Mr. Rawlinson, um... Yes, Miss Fitzroy? Uh, May I discuss a most... uh, a personal matter? Miss Fitzroy. Sir. Well, I'm so pleased. I mean, here for almost 20 years, you have been my most efficient Miss Fitzroy. I, uh... I didn't think you had personal matters. Well, it has to do with a, a dream. Yes? And it... it concerns you. Oh, Miss Fitzroy... Mr. Rawlinson, as your secretary, I know all about your attitudes toward women. I've never approved of your... your loose conduct. I am well aware of that. I can see it in your face whenever one of my lady loves calls on me. Now, please, hear me out. I I realize I I may be speaking out of turn, but this dream... I've been dreaming about your niece. But you don't even know my niece. I realize that. I hardly know my niece myself. <laughs> I haven't seen her since she was 10, and she must be mm, 19 by now. Well, I have a dream. And in this dream, I see this young lady, your niece, and she is in danger. Now, please, Miss Fitzroy, don't you go flaky on but me. But I, I must For tell almost her... two decades, you have been my... Well, you have been indispensable to me. You have made it possible for me to run this incredibly complex, well, I should say crazy business. You are the only person in the whole world who has never failed me. Now, now, don't go to pieces on me now. I am perfectly all right. Perhaps you need a vacation. All I'm trying You're to say... You're trying too hard. Now, take a vacation as long as you like. And you can have my yacht. Yes, yes, indeed. Fully equipped and staffed. Mr. Rowlandson, please, listen to me. When I took this job... I determined never, never to say anything more personal than good morning. I made it a rule. I should never have broken it. Well, tell me about your dream. Is it recurrent? Yes. I dream it every night. What happens? Well, in my dream, someone is trying to kill your niece. Who? I don't know. How? I don't know. Why? I don't know. Then how can you say that... I just have this feeling, this... This dreadful feeling. Well, can you give me any details? Well, she's on the plantation where, where she's living in South America with her mother. Yes. And I see the faces of men. Hard faces. Cruel faces. Yes. And I know those men intend to kill her. But 
What makes you think so? I, I can't say. It's, 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 it's a feeling. No, no, it's more than a feeling. It's a conviction. Miss Fitzroy. I know, I know it sounds insane, neurotic. Miss Fitzroy, let me account for your dream. I, I'm sorry I even spoke about it. Now, let us face facts. You are in love with me. Please, Mr. Rowlandson. You may even be unaware of it, but consider that you have given me your entire life. Mr. Rowlandson. My problems have been your problems. Your entire existence has been subordinated to my needs and conveniences. Oh, I should never have started You to... know how precious Donna, my darling Donna, my dead brother's child, is to me. I, I don't see where this can possibly... Donna, have... my greatest joy, but also the source of my greatest sorrow. Her mother, who despises me even more than she hated my poor dead brother, has taken the child away, back home with her to South America. Mr. Rowlandson, I, I don't know where you're headed. I am forbidden to see her. Now, hopefully, when Donna is 21, she will want to come to visit me. Uh, let us pretend I, I never said anything but at that all. That would be a lie. Because something is really bothering you. Now, this girl is all I have in the world. And I'm all you have in the world. And so Donna has become important to you, too. And you worry about her. You fear for her safety. You pray for her well-being. And so, feelings of trepidation. I, I have things to attend to. I notice you don't deny what I'm saying. You know the secret of my success. It's my supreme and sublime self-confidence. You saw me parlay a $10,000 investment into a billion-dollar corporation. You know, I always know what I'm talking about. Oh, I... I have never been so embarrassed. And I know you always know what you're talking about. Look, put in a call to South America. Get my dearest sister-in-law on the phone. <clears throat> Yes, Payita. It's me, Bill. Indeed. Listen, are you and Donna okay down there? Yes. Now, you're telling the truth. It's just that we read things are a bit unsettled in your part of the world. So, I was thinking, why don't you two come up here for a visit, eh? I swore an oath. I would never set eyes on you as long as I live. Now, is it fair to deprive Donna of an uncle, her only living relative... Well, next year, she will be of age. She'll want to come to see her Uncle Bill. Have you anything more to say to me? Well, not now. Goodbye. Just a minute. Let me say hello to Donna. One moment. Uncle Bill. <laughs> That's a sweet voice. Did you get the sweater I sent you? Yes, it was gorgeous. I'm knitting another one, plus an afghan, all for you. Well, instead of knitting so much, can't you convince your mother to bring you up here? Oh. Every day I try to tell Mama that you're really very sweet. But I'll see you next year. Honey, is, uh, is everything okay down there? What do you mean by okay? Well, I mean, are, are, oh, nothing. Oh, just put your mother on again, will you, honey? Oh, sure, Uncle Bill. Well? Listen, Estrellita... How would it be if, if I sent some men down to your place? Why? Armed guards. For what reason? This is a law-abiding country. Well, it, it, it would make me feel better. This is just another of your tricks, Bill. No, the law says that I have complete control over Donna until she is 21. And there is no way you can ever get to see her before then. Estrellita! Estrellita! Uh... Well, Miss Fitzroy... I spoke to both of them. And <laughs> everything's just fine. Now, does that make you feel better? I don't know how I feel. She's sending me another sweater. Now, where am I going to put it? The closet's full now. I only know. I have this dream. Well, I would prefer the gold-colored cotton. Now, do you hear that, Marie? In this voice tape, concentrate on the O sounds and listen to how many of them there are in gold-colored cotton. Gold-colored mm -hmm. cotton. Donna still has a very pronounced American accent. Oh, I've got her voice down. It's no problem. I worry about the looks. Uh, the looks are absolutely sensational. 
Dr. Esdran did a fantastic job in your face. I am still worried. Remember, it isn't essential for you to look exactly like Donna. You only have to resemble her picture. What, what else do I need? The history of the family. Oh, it's as if the tree grew in my own backyard. Ask me anything you want about any of the ancestors. Mm, I believe you. Hobbies. She needs, as you know, and so I had to take up that stupid pastime myself. It is not a stupid pastime. It's a serious part of her entire personality. All right, Chesco. I look like her. I sound like her. I need like her. I know everything that's supposed to be going on around and around in her brain. And now what? No. We wait for precisely the right moment. <laughs> No, 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 don't. We, we have to save her. We, we, we have to save her. Oh, oh, that dream. That dream again. What's the matter with me? What's the matter with me? Oh, I can't do this. I can't call Mr. Rawlinson at three in the morning because of a, of a dream. I, I can't. I'm going crazy. I can't help it. I must call. I must. I, I have to call him. Hi. Uh, hello? Oh, M Mr. Rawlinson. Oh. Uh -huh. It's you, Miss Fitzroy. Well, what's the problem? Uh, the problem is... Good Lord, it's three in the morning. Are you still at the office? Oh, no, sir. I, I'm home. In bed. And I, I just woke up. I, I had this, this terrible nightmare. I had it again. You know the the one we talked about. Well. Well, uh, that's all I can tell you. Well, if that's all you can tell me, Miss Fitzroy, I, I suppose this has to be the end of our conversation. Mr. Rawlinson, I, I realize this sounds crazy. What we should do is get a tape of it so you can hear just how crazy. I, I'm not a. Particularly psychic person. At least I never thought of myself in that way. Well, now, it is, it is very interesting, but uh, why don't we talk about it in the office tomorrow? Sir, what I think you should do is call the police station in Porto, San Diego. Where? That's the town nearest your sister-in-law's plantation. Oh, that's in South America. I know. Now, ask them to send a squad of police over to the house. Why? Because my secretary is having a bad dream? No, sir. Because you are frightened for the safety of your sister-in-law and your niece. But who'd want to harm them? Please. But I'm, well, I'm maybe 10,000 miles away. Sir, you're William J. Big Bill Rawlinson. When you talk, people listen. Will you call the police now? All right, all right, I'll handle it. You're, you're not saying this just to quiet me. I said I'll handle it. Do it now. It's the only way we can save them. There's a little bit of ESP, extrasensory perception for you. Premonitions. Don't hold them cheaply. And consider this one, which Miss Fitzroy is having. Is it true? Is it false? Is she having it at the right time? Or perhaps too late? By the same token, too early. A full load of questions. But you know we do get around to answering all of them. Starting with Act Two which I shall bring you in just a few moments. She's one of those highly dignified, super-efficient executive secretaries who are found in the offices of giants of industry. She's handsome rather than beautiful, all enamel and steel. But you wouldn't know it if you could hear her on the telephone right now at three in the morning, why, she sounds just like any terrified, hysterical, middle-aged woman. Miss Fitzroy, I said I'd handle it. Now, we have a district manager. That is, our copper company has a man nearby in Dos Cruces. Now, Miss having... Fitzroy, I said I would see to it. You're, you're not just humoring me. Of course not. Now, why don't you get off the phone so I can start the wheels turning? <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Now? 
Tonight? Right now. Oh, l- let me get my raincoat. You don't need it. Come on. Oh. This, this is... This the... is when it happens. Now get inside the car. Oh. Move out, Cory. When we get there, we'll break in. Oh, the, the, the servants. What servants? There's a housekeeper, a chauffeur, a gardener. All three of them are our people. Oh. This mission has been on the drawing board for five years. Yes, see. This is the chief of police, Puerto San Diego. Who? Who? Senor William Rollinson? No, we have no Senor William Rollinson here. No, you must have the wrong number. Oh, you are the Senor William Rollinson. <laughs> si, Senor. What? Send the squad to the finca of Senor Estrellita Rollinson, your sister-in-law? But why? You say there's trouble? Oh, there might be trouble. Well, see, si, Senor. But it's raining. No, 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 senor. It is not necessary to telephone the presidente. I will make the necessary arrangement. Si, senor. Oh, si, si. No self-respecting bandito would go out on a night like this. Crazy Norte Americanos. Hola, Sanchez. Luis, wake up. Get the girl's body out of here. You know where to get rid of it. Donna? Donna, I'm talking to you, Maria. Huh? Shh, from now huh? on, that's your name, Donna. Now listen, we have to work fast. Don't worry about me. I know what I'm supposed to do. I know what I'm supposed to say. Mm-hmm. I am a trained operator. Ah, you young kids, you think you know everything. You had better get out of here. It is my show now. Our show. I'll be in America to supervise. Now listen, we have provided for absolutely every contingency. Nothing, absolutely nothing can go wrong. <laughs> I was frightened, and there was such terrible thunder and lightning. Oh, Uncle Bill. Now, now, honey, everything's going to be all right. I was so scared. So I thought I'd spend the night in Mama's bedroom, and we had just fallen asleep when we were awakened by... By these men. Uh, can you describe these men, Senorita Robinson? They, they, they wore masks, and they just burst into the room, and they demanded Mama's jewels, and Mama told them to get out. Oh, Uncle Bill, you know how Mama was. Yes, honey, yes, I know. Those men, those terrible men, they just started to, to, to shoot, and I fainted, and when I woke up, the police were in the house, and Mama, poor Mama was dead. Yes, yes, you, you, you're, you're going to come home with me to America. You see, Senor Olison, how did you know? How did you know there would be danger? Uh, do you need Miss Rawlinson, my niece, for anything else? Uh, no, senor. We have her statement. Uh, can she leave the country? Oh, si, senor. But tell me, how did you know? How did you know? <laughs> This is my secretary, Miss Fitzroy. How do you do, Miss Rawlinson? I'm so happy to meet you, Miss Fitzroy. Anything you want to know about anything at all, you just ask Miss Fitzroy. Oh, I shall. Don't worry. Uh, do you have a ruler, Miss Fitzroy? Of course. Here you are. I want to measure your shoulders, Uncle Bill. What for? Well, I'm knitting you a new sweater. Donna, honey, I have a million sweaters. I can't help it. The doctor told Mama I was a compulsive knitter. Mama. Poor Mama. Yes, yes. At least you were spared. You, uh, don't like my sweaters, Uncle Bill? Oh, I love them. It's just that you've made me so many. See, I'm wearing one right now. Uh, Why don't you knit a sweater for Miss Fitzroy? Would you wear it, Miss Fitzroy? Of course she would. Now, tell me, what would you like to do today? Oh, I haven't even started on the museums and the shops and 
Oh, there's so many plays I've just been dying to see. Miss Fitzroy, why don't you arrange a kind of itinerary for Donna? Uh, plan the next week or so for shopping, sightseeing, make reservations for tickets, restaurants. Yes, Mr. Rawlinson. I'll do it immediately. You're going to love it here, Donna. I know. Did your mother ever tell you who I am? Of course. You're my daddy's brother, my Uncle Bill. Mm -hmm. But what else did she tell you about me? I'd uh, rather not say. You know how Mama felt about you. She insisted you turn Daddy against her. Mm, I didn't. Did she tell you how much money I have? She said you're a very wealthy man. Do you know what that means? It means you have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And power. I influence a great many things in this country... And one day, I'm going to be out of the picture. Oh, please, don't talk about dying, Uncle Bill. Not, Please, not now. Well, death is a fact of life. Now, everything I own will belong to you. How will you use it, I wonder? Oh. Oh, I'll use it where I think it'll do the most good. <laughs> I'm happy to hear that kind of an answer. Uncle Bill? Hmm? This Miss Fitzroy? Yes, who is she? Well, she's been my secretary since the year one. And she's a very nice lady. Why doesn't she like me? What are you saying? I, I have this, this feeling that she doesn't like me. Now, how can you say that? She, she loves you. She does? Yes, take my word for it. Well, if you say so. Knit her a sweater. She deserves it. May I share this table? If you like. Well, I was wondering when you'd show up, Chesco. I want a report. Oh, I don't have time now. I have to meet my dear uncle in 30 minutes. He's taking me to a baseball game. How will I manage to sit through it? Do your knitting. How are things? Oh, this Miss Fitzroy may be a problem. The secretary? Oh. I, I, I think they're in love with each other. Oh, nonsense. She's been his secretary for 20 years. We know for a fact they haven't had or are now having an affair. I am talking about love, Jesco. You can see it in the way they look at each other, talk with each other. None of our intelligence has ever verified what you claim. Oh, neither he nor she are really aware of it just yet. But one day, it can flare up. Uh, let it. No, because it means they will have to marry. And I will not be the only one to inherit then. Therefore, the holdings will not be ours to control as we wish. Well, if she becomes a threat... Well, you, you can't solve everything with a gun, Chesco. What is your suggestion? I shall be the poor, persecuted little niece. As a matter of fact, I have sown the seed already. <laughs> that. Oh. What else has to be cleared up this morning, Miss Fitzroy? Well, you have to look at some top-secret reports on the J system. You have them? A colonel from military intelligence placed them in my hands in the outer office. Now, they're for your eyes and my eyes only. He's waiting for them. Then we better check him out right now. Mm -hmm. Hi, Uncle Bill. May I come in? <laughs> sure, honey. No, no, Donna, you cannot come into the office now. Uncle Bill. Mr. Rawlinson, what are we reading? Hmm? Oh, yes, yes. No, honey, uh, could you excuse us for just a couple of minutes? Of course. I'll excuse you for as long as you want. Oh, darn it, your imagination. <laughs> Uncle Bill, she as good as threw me out of the office. It's because we had this top secret document. Oh, sure. Honestly, and I, 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 I had forgotten. It's her job to remind me. She doesn't like the sweater I knitted her. Oh, she does. She told me she does. Well, then why doesn't she wear it? Because it's red, and she never wears red. Her color is blue. Well, she'd look a lot better in red. I know, but that's how she sees herself. I wish you'd fire her. Now, she's been with me for 20 years. Why doesn't she like me? What did I ever do to her? <laughs> the agenda for the board meeting will consist of... Mr. Rawlinson. Hmm? Oh, yes, Miss Fitzroy. Uh, would you rather discuss this another time? No, no, no. The meeting's tomorrow. We have to do it now. Oh, all right. Now, the financial report, the analysis... Miss Fitzroy. Yes, sir. 
may I discuss a most personal matter? Oh? Why, why don't you like my niece? Oh, no, 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 that isn't true. But what makes you say I, I don't like her? Well, for one thing, you don't wear the sweater she knitted for you. Well, the weather has been quite warm, hasn't it? Yes, but, but the girl has a feeling that you dislike her. Oh, Mr. Rowlandson, I can assure now, this you is that... this embarrassing I... for both of us. She's been through a terrible ordeal. You realize that? Yes, Mr. Rowlandson. And she's probably not herself. Yes, sir. I, uh... Well, I would consider it a personal favor if you, you'd smile at her. And, and you really should wear her sweater. Oh, I will, Mr. Rowlandson. <laughs> I can always depend on you to do the right thing. <laughs> now... Where were we on the agenda? Let's see. The financial report, the analysis of the research on... Hmm. Uh, yes, Miss Fitzroy? Mr. Rawlinson, I... I'm bound by the truth to... to, to make a confession. Confession? Uh, yes, he, your niece has this feeling that I dislike her. Well, it, it, it isn't that I dislike her exactly. No, no, what does that mean? Well, she... She probably senses something I feel... All right, what's that? Uh, I, I, I don't know how to say this. Well, you generally manage to make yourself understood. Perhaps, but this time I... I'm not sure. Miss Fitzroy, what are you trying to tell me? Well, what I'm trying to tell you is that I have this this feeling, and it, it keeps nagging at me that, that this girl is not your niece. Not my... What are you saying, Miss Fitzroy? What are you saying? I believe we all heard her. Well, we know it because we were all witnesses to a scene which proves it. But how does Miss Fitzroy know it? Or if she has a feeling, what has brought it about? After all, she has no way of knowing. Or does she? Well, you're in this deep. Stay around for the expose, which happens in Act Three, which I shall bring you in just a few moments. There are those people who have very little to say, and when they do speak, it's brief and to the point, and each word is a bombshell. Such a person, as you have already witnessed, is our Miss Amelia Fitzroy. And when she speaks, she is a woman who is not to be taken lightly, especially by her employer. But this time, what is she saying? She is not your niece. I'm afraid I don't understand. I know it sounds crazy, but I... Miss Fitzroy, I always hold everything you say as serious, logical... I know, I know. Well... Maybe I shouldn't have said it. But you did. I, I just... Well, it, it was out before I knew it. Well, let's get to the bottom of it. Why? Why do you think Donna is not my niece? Oh, it, it's just... Just a feeling. And since I also had a feeling that your sister-in-law's plantation was going to be attacked, and, and it did happen... We accounted for that. It was the normal... Well, what I mean... Well, we have feelings of anxiety, and when something happens... I understand all that, Mr. Rowlandson, but I have this feeling that that she's, a, she's an imposter. Miss Fitzroy, let us consider the situation rationally. There, there's nothing rational about it. It's just, just this crazy feeling I have. Well, if she is not Donna Rowlandson, my niece, the child of my dead brother, who is she? I don't know. You do not. Oh, why do you say that? I, I can Her assure you Her identity that... has not yet surfaced in your fantasy. I am merely anticipating it. Uh, that's been another secret of my success, as you well know. My ability to anticipate. Yes, but what, what fantasy are you talking about? Part of this fantasy was your feeling that my niece was in danger. Uh, by coincidence, her mother was killed by bandits. But Mr. Rollins... And so she comes here. Now you fantasize something else. Why do you insist that I fantasize? You are sublimating. Sublimating what? If she's not my niece, who is she? Now, now please, I, I know how this must sound. She is a foreign agent. Oh. <sighs> All right, for the sake of argument, I'll agree. Why? Why? <laughs> Among other things, the J system. 
Now, suppose a foreign power wanted to gain control of it. You are this company, the sole stockholder. Continue. Your niece is your heiress. She gets all of Rawlinson Industries, the entire far-flung, diversified... But she looks exactly like my niece. She looks like your niece's picture. Now, you haven't seen the girl since she was ten years old. And so, in order to gain control of Rawlinson Industries and the J system, foreign agents murdered both your sister-in-law and your niece. And this girl is in person. I must say, when you fantasize, it's a beauty. Well, I feel it's my duty to let you know. No. Now, let me tell you again what this is all about. Oh, please. You are in love with me. That is not true. It is subconsciously, perhaps, and I'm sorry about that, but it's one of the hazards of your job. And, well, it's the love of a truly idealistic, unselfish woman. All you want is my happiness. Mr. Rawlinson, you are the most egotistical... Of course. How else can you account for my success? Now, you thought I needed my niece to make me happy. So you fantasized her danger. But now that she's here, you see her as a threat to your own position. That is untrue. But you have no cause to be jealous. I'm not being jealous. And, and you're the one who's fantasizing. Very well. Now, now let's, let's put the thing to rest. Pick up the telephone, please, and get me the chief of police in Puerto San Diego. <laughs> Now, you're sure the young lady is actually Miss Donna Rawlinson? Well, who else could she be, senor? Would you swear she is Donna Rawlinson? Well, uh, senor, I was not acquainted with the senorita personally. Well, the servants. I want you to interview the servants and make sure. Why, senor, the servants are gone. What do you mean, gone? The finca, the plantation has closed and they are gone. I see. Well, thank you, Chief. All right, now, Miss Fitzroy, the thing is ridiculous. The uh, receptionist said I was to go in. I hope it's all right with you, Miss Fitzroy. Well, of course it's all right. Oh, uh, will you excuse me? I have these reports to work on. I told you she didn't like me. The minute I walk in, she walks out. She can't stand the sight of me. Dear, she's very busy. Well, she didn't even say hello to me. Yes, she did. She nodded. And she never wears the sweater I knitted for her, and I worked so hard on it. Honey, it's a hot day. Oh, Uncle Bill, I wish you'd get rid of her. Now, why? Well, she... She frightens me. Honey, don't worry about it. There are times when she frightens me, too. What do you mean, Jasko? Cory tells me the police down in Porto, San Diego, are asking questions. They're trying to track down the servants. Why? To make sure you're the real Donna Rawlinson. Aha, uh -huh. that's some of Miss Fitzroy's work, I'm sure. Well, I can take care of Miss Fitzroy. Oh, that's all we'd need. I have a better idea. Hmm? Let the police find our man who was working as Astro Leader Rawlinson's chauffeur. Good, good. And they can send him up here to identify you. Eh? No, no, we can do better. He can tell the police about my boyfriend. Boyfriend? Donna didn't have a boyfriend. Of course she did. All the servants knew about it. His name was Jasko. Oh, I see. I'm so happy to meet you, Mr. Chesko. You certainly picture yourself a handsome young man, Donna. Oh, I'm so glad you like him, Uncle Bill. I'm so anxious for you two to get along. How long have you known each other? Since Donna was 16. Well, what are your plans, Chesko? I, uh, I must go back to my job in Porto San Diego. What do you do? I am an engineer. Hmm. How'd you like to work for me? Oh, Uncle Bill! What? What, I need a visa and permission These to... These things are no problem. Arrange it, please, Miss Fitzroy. Yes, sir. And meanwhile, Chesco, till you get settled, you'll stay at the house with us. Oh, Uncle Bill, how can I ever thank you? Just by being happy. Oh, you're an old darling. Take us to lunch. You two run along. I'll see you tonight. <laughs> Bye, Uncle Bill. Goodbye, sir, and thank you. Well, Miss Fitzroy, convinced? Of what? Of the fact that she's really and truly my niece. Why? What has occurred to convince me? Her boyfriend. 
how do we know he's her boyfriend? Well, the chief of police back home says so. No. He says one of the servants says so. Well? How do we know the servants were not in on the plot? Oh, I give up. You investigate the acquisition of a company more thoroughly Miss than you... Miss Fitzroy. Now, I, I appreciate your deep interest. But I must tell you that I would like an end to this discussion for all time. Why are you so afraid of Miss Fitzroy? I don't know, Chesco. She scares me. You were right. You have to get rid of her. But I thought you said she that... She is the one factor that couldn't be foreseen. She'll keep sniping away until she hits something vital. Mm. Get rid of her. How? Well, it has to be an accident. Oh! <gasps> she takes the subway home every night, and it's during the rush hour. Right. Excuse me, lady. Oh, you, you look familiar. I got to take a train to this address, but I can't make it out. And your voice. Could you read it for me, please? Oh, well, let me look. What does it say? I, I, I think it says... No! <laughs> oh, what happened to you, Miss Fitzroy? Uh, are you feeling better? Oh, it, it, it was a miracle. Uh, Do you know, I, I fell between the tracks. In, in that depression they have, the, the train just passed over me. You worked yourself into a state of exhaustion. You had a dizzy spell and fell under the track. But I didn't fall. I was pushed. Now, do you see what I mean? By, by that young Chesco. Let me sit through you are taking a vacation on my yacht if I have to Shanghai you on board myself. But, Colonel Dawson... Miss Fitzroy, we've checked out Miss Donna Rawlinson very carefully. And you're satisfied she's who she says she is? We have no evidence to indicate anything else. Her boyfriend, this Chesco, what about him? He's a clean-cut young man, good record back home. Then why did he try to kill me? Off the record, why are you so antagonistic toward Mr. Rawlinson's knees? Uh, I see that story has been carefully circulated. I understand she goes out of her way to be nice to you. She, uh, she even knits you sweaters. But I tell you, I... Well, what did you say? Well, what I'm trying to say is it, it sounds as if you're jealous of a new female in Rawlinson's life. No, no, about a sweater. She, she knitted me a sweater. Colonel... I'm going to have your evidence. You know, Mr. Rollinson, Donna's mother didn't like me. Oh, she liked you? She just wanted you to wait five years. Honestly, Uncle Bill, the arguments we used to have. Well, I want you two to be happy now. Good evening. Miss Fitzroy, I didn't hear you come in. Something new at the office? No. There's something new here. Oh, Mr. Chesco. <laughs> I'm sorry your attempt to murder me failed. Now, see here, Miss Fitzroy. This young man is a guest in my house. Uh, Miss Fitzroy, what, 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 what are you saying? I am saying that you and this young lady are imposters. The real Donna Rawlinson is dead. And you, Miss Opposing... I must ask you to leave, Miss no. Fitzroy. You'd better ask me to prove it. And I can. Now, both of us are wearing sweaters knitted by your niece... Yours was sent to you about six months ago. Mine was just, just last week. They were not knitted by the same person. And what are you driving at? No two human beings knit exactly the same kind of stitches, the same size, the same intervals, because the tension in the fingers differs she's, from one... She's crazy. Oh, sure. Of course I'm crazy. I was crazy to work my life away from Mr. Rowlandson, but that doesn't mean I'm wrong about this. Amelia. Oh. <sighs> That's the first time you you ever called me Amelia. Just look. Look, examine the stitches. Your sweater and mine. You see the difference? That's the one thing they couldn't foresee. Just let an expert examine those stitches. Everybody, stand still. What? Let's go. You idiot. Did you have to panic? Did you have to pull that gun? We'll have to arrange for something. So far, nobody knows except us in this room. 
you still inherit the estate. Everybody knows, Jessica. Oh, Colonel Dawson. Everybody who has anything to do with the J system has a constant tale. Well, Chesco, and you, young lady, we have enough people here to handle everything. Let's go. But I did, Let's I go, did, Chesco. Did, and you, miss. No, I did. Please, 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 please. I'm sorry. It's all right. Especially for your niece. Yes. Poor Donna. I'm grateful to you. Tell me, how did you know about the difference in stitches? Oh, I didn't. I made it up. Amelia. <laughs> well, I, I learned it from you. When something sounds reasonable, write it for all it's worth, because it may be true. Amelia, both of us have been sublimating. <laughs> I know. About that trip on the yard. Hmm? How about if I came along? Oh, I've waited 20 years. Although I, I didn't know I was waiting. And I didn't know I was keeping you waiting. Oh, well, what are we waiting for now? Nothing. <laughs> Sublimation. Sometimes the greatest deeds are performed by people who are only performing them because they would much rather be performing something else. That's because people are uniquely crazy, which is all to the good. Because if that weren't so, whatever would we do for stories? If you want to know, just wait a few moments and I shall return. Mr. Chesco and the false Donna were consigned to whatever limbo captured spies are sent to, and Amelia and Bill lived happily ever after. Most experts, uh, that is, knitting experts, agree that knitting is as distinctive as handwriting. So we're on sound ground there. And you can always be sure of resting on sound ground if you tune us in seven times each week. Our cast included Leon Janney, Bryna Rayburn, Rosemary Rice, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs> 